and it's not just your run-of-the-mill uh, tropical juicy double dry hopped IPA but whatever um, there's a sweetness to it which I wasn't expecting because they really went on about this bitterness that they were going to bring to it Hi guys, it's Jim here from Dr. Tankenstein with another episode of Beers of the British Isles. On today's episode, we're drinking Northbridge. Now this beer is a collaboration beer between North Brewing Co. and Thornbridge, which I guess gets you the very clever name of Northbridge. You get it. Now, North Bruco, uh, Thornbridge, I've covered those guys on the uh, on the shows before. Uh, both great breweries, both northern breweries. This is Leeds versus Bakewell. Um, I mean, North Bruco are good, but uh, Thornbridge can do no wrong, in my opinion. And if you look at this beer, if you look at the, the design on the can, this is very much a uh, Thornbridge design. Uh, North Bruco just get a, get a little shout out at the bottom there, which I guess is fine. So the beer itself, uh, enough about the breweries, the beer itself, um, North Bridge, uh, the cleverest name in the West, uh, is a mountain IPA, which is 100% uh, a made up style. Uh, I've never heard of it before, they, they invented it. Um, but they say that this beer toes the line between um, West Coast bitterness and East Coast hops, I guess it's it. West Coast bitterness, East Coast hops. Um, and I guess in the middle of the coast, you get mountains, right? We certainly do in this country anyway. So my first ever mountain IPA by two of my favorite breweries. Let's check it out. Okay, we're all poured in. I uh, got myself a nice cold glass of Mountain IPA, Northbridge. Now, this is a 7.2% Mountain IPA, so it's a bit of a big boy. Uh, so I poured myself a nice big glass of it. Uh, it looks incredible. It looks great. It's got a real, real haze to it. It's not quite opaque, but remember, this is supposed to toe the line between uh, those two coasts. Uh, now it's easy to see looking at the recipe why this would be opaque. Uh, this is a Thornbridge beer, uh, or at least half of it is. So obviously it's got Marisotta in there as the, as the base malt. Um, but then other than that, it has flaked oats and flaked wheat. And uh, the flakedness uh, really matters here because Flaked grains give you a much, much higher protein content. Uh, haze isn't necessarily all due to protein, but the protein uh, from the grains definitely helps. It helps with head retention, which this beer, believe it or not, does have. Um, it gave a real good showing as I poured it, and now um, it's just sort of dying, but it's that's, that's my fault, uh, as I always say. Uh, so the head retention is great, the haze is, is, is great. Uh, I imagine this beer is going to be so full-bodied, uh, it's unbelievable. Um, and I guess those, the inclusion of those flake grains there kind of separates this from being just a classic Nipah uh, New England IPA, uh, East Coast IPA, because in those styles it's, it's more commonplace to use the malted version. So malted wheat, malted oats still give you a big protein kick but they also give you, uh, I mean, malted oats, my God, I mean, they give you such a, a sweet, sweet, sweet taste, uh, as well as the, the wheat, you know, that contributes to that malty flavor as well. Uh, the flaked grains don't do that. So I guess what we're doing here is we're stepping away from the sweet East Coast, and we're going over a little bit more into the, the bitter West Coast. So let's give it a sniff. Wow, that is so interesting. 
Uh, so, I'll, I'll run you through the hops before I run you through what the aroma is. So the, the, the hops in this uh, are Citra, classic, you know, everybody, everybody likes Citra, everybody loves Citra. Um, and then there's a couple of hops that I've never heard of before. So there's this hop, uh, HBC353 uh, or whatever, I'll, I'll put it up. Um, HBC353, um, and this is, it almost sounds like a, like a traditional sort of noble hop. It's floral, it's spicy. Uh, you know, it sounds like either a British or a German hop. Um, I'm not sure where it's from, uh, but that's, that's what it sounds like. And then you have this hop, BRU-1. Or brew one, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna call it brew one, uh, just in case any homebrewers are watching and just laughing at me calling it BRU dash one, uh, brew one, uh, or maybe the other way, maybe it is BRU dash one, and I'm calling it anyway. I'm an old man. Uh, BRU one, brew one, um, is by all accounts the most pineapple hop you'll ever come across. Um, it's just literally pineapple, but it's also known to have a slightly floral character. And that's definitely what we're getting through here in the aroma. It's super interesting. So the pineapple is there. I expected it to be a little bit more if I'm honest, but it, it, it does, it is there. It is present, it's playing. Um, but having that pineapple with that sort of spicy, peppery, uh, floral stuff going on as well is is making for a really interesting uh, scent. So let's see what it tastes like. Mm -mm. Ooh, wow. And you have to give that a second just to uh, just to do the rounds, uh, hit all the uh, different taste buds that it needs to hit. I mean, pineapple is correct. It's, it's pineapple. The pineapple is very, is, is a delicious pineapple flavor, basically. Um, but like I say, those spicy notes that were in the aroma are carrying through into the flavor and it's making it very, very interesting. The, the pineapple is very strong, but it's almost having having to compete and remind you that it's, it's, it's pineapple, just because you have these other kind of interesting flavors going on that your brain wants to focus on. If I can be honest, um, I'm not sure they needed the citra in there, except for the fact that if you really, really think about it, there's a very subtle lemoniness to this. Uh, and that's one of those things where I said, after you know, it kind of does around, it hits all the, all the, the parts of your mouth. Um, that's where the citra comes in. So citra is kind of just waiting in the background for that brew one, B-R-U one, the hop I can't say. Uh, it's just waiting for that to get out of the way first. Um, very interesting uh, hot profile. I'm gonna be honest, uh, not as bitter as I thought it would be, but I don't know how bitter you could get away with that being. So maybe it's exactly as bitter as it needs to be. Maybe don't go shouting about it, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, the malt profile, the, the, sorry, the malt bill is basically staying out of the way. There's a there's a touch of it in there, but basically the malt profile here is here for booze, and it's here for haze. Okay, then let's sum this up. Let's uh, east meet west and uh, get the mountain IP. Let's just say what I think. So, I mean, it looks great. First off, it looks great. You've got um, all those flaked malts with the uh, local Amaris Otter, I'm sure, giving it 
a real fluorescence. Uh, the flake malts, uh, sorry, the flake grains uh, adding to the haze. Uh, this BRU1, Brew1, the, the hop I can't say, the, the you know, the, the thing I, I can't say, um, is also known to assist in haze stability. Uh, so I'm guessing that means it's got a very high essential oil content uh, because that's basically what uh, forms haze as well. Uh, so it looks great. Uh, the head retention is cool. I mean, if you look, it's still it's still really giving it a real good go uh, in this glass. It's got like a bit of a halo on it. If I just give it a little nudge, it'll fluff up again, which is which is good. Now the aroma is like I say, it's that super interesting aroma because it's without a doubt it's pineapple. But it's also got some friends, you know, it's it's floral, it's, it is spicy and it's tropical because of the pineapple, but it is, it is very interesting. It's, and it's, it's, I would say a unique uh, hop aroma because, because it's intentional. And I know that this is intentional coming from these guys. Um, it's very, it's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I just stand by what I said earlier. You get a big pineapple slap you in the face, but then you've also got the interesting floral uh, and spicy notes to, to look at from the, um, probably the HBC 353, if that's what it's called. Um, so it is interesting. It's not just your run of the mill, uh, tropical, juicy, double dry hop IPA, whatever. Um, there's a sweetness to it, which I wasn't expecting because they really went on about this bitterness that they were gonna bring to it. Um, and I just don't know that's carried through. Okay, so so I'm gonna rate this. I'm gonna rate this on a scale not to 10. And as I do so, I'm thinking, is it bitter? Is it hoppy you know is it really its own new style and uh unfortunately i think the answer to that is no it's i mean it's it's an interesting beer for sure for sure it's interesting but on a scale of not to 10 i'm gonna have to give this a six because it's just not special enough to warrant them not just calling it an East Coast IPA or even a Vermont IPA. I mean, they've got a beer called uh, called Green Mountain, Thornbridge have, uh, obviously not, not North Brook, they're, they're different. Um, I mean, this could be, you know, double Green Mountain or something like that. It's, it's just, it's not, it hasn't knocked my socks off in the way that I thought it would, you know, Mountain IPA, it's just marketing stuff really. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not a great beer. Uh, it, it's still very good. I mean, a six out of 10 is still a good score. And what do I know? You might love it. This might be your 10 out of 10. So head down to Tesco, grab yourself uh, a North Bridge, uh, Thornbridge, North Bruco collaboration. Uh, and as you sip away at this, uh, put on Walk the Line by Johnny Cash because this beer claims to walk the line. And I think we deserve a better appreciation of who really does walk the line. Uh, so cheers guys, you won't find any mountain IPAs in your bottle shops, but you will find some great beers. So obviously support your local bottle shops. Um, and in the meantime, cheers. Thank you.